The Q80T, one of Samsung's entry-level QLED TVs for 2020 and it replaces the Q80R from 2019. Now in this video we'll be testing anti-glare, off-axis viewing, pattern uniformity, local dimming zones and tone mapping. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and now we're on Tech Lover. And while I have the Samsung Q80T in for review, I promised you guys that I'll be creating a screen test, gaming demo and of course a full review. So this is the screen test. Now first I want to clear something up from the unboxing video as far as the HDMI 2.1 support on this TV. Now there's been a bunch of conflicting information out there. but. The HDMI port 4 is where it's a single HDMI 2.1 port that this TV has. So it does have an HDMI 2.1 port and it's denoted by a game console controller on that HDMI port. So that's the port that you should connect your consoles to whether you have an Xbox One X or that new fancy PS5 or Xbox Series X. All the other ports though are HDMI 2.0. Now the HDMI 3 port has support for EARC which is another HDMI 2.1 feature. Now this will be my standard suite of screen tests that I'll be running for all the 2020 TVs that I review this year. And that's actual 2020 TVs, not 2020 actual TVs. Alright, so let's go see what this TV's got. Here we can see how well the Samsung handles a bright light directly in front of the screen. The coating disperses the light so not all of it is reflected back to the viewer. This results in some very good bright room performance but the side effect is the streaking that you can see in the light across the screen. The streaking tends to happen with any bright source that's either in front of or parallel to the screen. At full brightness, I think the TV would do very well in challenging rooms with a lot of ambient light. There isn't much loss in color or contrast in off-axis viewing. There is a little but not significant enough to be a distraction. There is however a noticeable loss of brightness that's evident, especially in this side-by-side -side comparison. Testing the local dimming zones, we find out that the TV has 4 vertical and 12 horizontal rows for a total of 48 local dimming zones. You can see that as a bright object is placed in the left corner of the screen, almost the entire screen lights up because of the low amount of local dimming zones. And as the object is removed, then the blooming disappears. In this test of contrast and tone mapping, the TV actually performs very well for an LCD TV. In this window to full field peak brightness test, there's a lot of fluctuations in the brightness as the window grows and additional backlight zones are turned on. There are no drastic changes in peak brightness and the fluctuations most likely wouldn't be noticeable in regular viewing. The 
local dimming algorithm was too aggressive, then the corners of the white squares would have a darker vignette around them. But it doesn't, so Samsung isn't darkening the corners of bright objects just to get the contrast ratio to look higher than it actually is. There's some slight dirty screen effect, but this is some panel uniformity issues which you typically find on many LED TVs. The TV has very good motion handling for 24 frames per second content and doesn't result in any judder in panning scenes. full-field 15% gray screen, we can see where there's some clouding on the edge of the screen, but that's more a panel uniformity issue, so that will vary by panel to panel. The star field test is a pretty difficult test for any full array local dimming TV because of all the point brightness. And of course there's a lot of blooming as a result, and the brightness of the backlight zones fluctuate as a result and make it look like it's flashing. So that's the test. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on whether you think it did well or it didn't do so well. And of course, be sure to stick around for the gaming demo and the full review which is yet to come. And also my coverage of the other 2020 model TVs from all the different manufacturers. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying, be safe and peace.